Here's a word from Class Central, the most popular search and review site for online courses. If you've ever gone on the hunt for a great online course from a top university, then you may already know about Class Central. Class Central is the most comprehensive search engine for MOOCs and online courses. The site lists over 10,000 courses and allows you to search by subject, university, keyword and language of instruction. With tens of thousands of user reviews, you can use Class Central to help you decide if a course is right for you. And if you're into geeking out about online learning like I am, you'll love diving into Class Central's MOOC report. The MOOC report covers everything that's going on in the MOOC space, with news, analysis and opinions about the fascinating world of online courses. A great place to start is with Class Central's in-depth analysis of the state of MOOCs in 2017. You can find a link in our show notes. Or if you're interested in finding out which courses are ranked the highest, check out Class Central's course rankings for the month and the year. Or have a look at the top 50 MOOCs of all time. Hi everyone and welcome to this latest episode from the EdTech Podcast. Our mission is to improve the dialogue between ed and tech for better innovation and impact. And this week, we are delighted to be in conversation with Jesus Ariel Sanchez, a K-12 teacher from the E. E. Miller Elementary School in North Carolina. Jesus is a listener to the EdTech podcast, and we got the chance to meet and record at this year's South by Southwest EDU after he had taken on some ideas for a makerspace and use of augmented reality from our past episodes, which was very, very cool. Jesus has a master's degree in the integration of virtual learning environments and is originally from Colombia. So we naturally also talked about cycling as well as a whole list of apps and other tools which Jesus is currently using to engage his class. So listen in closely to this short and sharp episode. But before all of that, this week we had some brilliant interactions from listeners from around the world. First up, hello to Chance, who dropped an email to us titled Love the Podcast and said, Hi Sophie, first off, just wanted to say I love the podcast and what you've been able to accomplish so quickly. I've been a listener since last summer and really enjoy listening to the episodes. My favourite is the China and EdTech episode. We're in such a fascinating moment for EdTech. I was wondering if in your journeys in the edtech realm, have you come across any startup or organisation involved in facilitating collaborative learning online? Thanks in advance, Chance. So hi, Chance. Yes, I'd recommend you looking up anything from FutureLearn to Belugo to the Wonder Why Society to Be Masterly to 42 Courses. So uh, those companies variously are from the UK, the US, the UK again, um, Australia and South Africa. What about other listeners? What recommendations for collaborative learning online would you share with Chance? Next up, Richard Taylor message to correct Anant Agarwal's tracing of the entire MOOC movement back to Saul Khan, tweeting, The first real MOOC was Plato in brackets, programmed logic for automatic teaching operations, close bracket, developed in 1960 at University of Illinois. Sal Khan may be inspirational, but he's not the father of the entire MOOC movement. So there we go. Perhaps multiple inputs over time for the MOOC movement. What do you all think? And then a favourite update from India, from Ramya Srinivasan, or at Ram underscore SR, who tweeted, at Podcast EdTech, do you have a podcast on online learning design pedagogies being planned? You are my morning podcast during the at Uber underscore India commute. Well, thank you, Ramya. I love the idea of you chilling in the early morning snarl up listening in. We do have way more episodes coming and lots on learner experience design and motivation at our festival in September in case you want to come over to London for that. I'd love to say hi in person, so if you don't make it here, maybe I'll make the trip out to you soon. 
And finally, a big congrats to past guest and listener Stefan Casper, or at Dots and Spaces, who just recently announced that he will be leaving his post at the University of Southampton to move to Pittsburgh to a new role working on media and multicultural projects at the Carnegie University. So good luck, Stefan, and keep throwing us some thoughts and comments from the US. We hope your move goes very smoothly. Wow, what a mega week of updates and listener comments, so keep them all coming. Big thanks to Class Central for supporting this week's episode. Next week, we have a feature episode on Nordic excellence featuring 100, Oslo EdTech and 21-year-old AI startup founder. Until then, have a wonderful week. It's a pleasure to meet you in person. Oh, it's nice to meet you too. It's very exciting. So you were just telling me how you came to find out about the EdTech podcast. Yes. Um, there is a list of people who are going to attend the event. And I saw the words podcast <laughs> and TED. Um, and I found that this is something that I really wanted to listen to. And I started to listen to the podcast and I was fascinated about the content, about the quality of the guests that you have. And I plug into the, the programs and I haven't been able to stop listening to, to your shows. It's very kind and thank you for your kind words. Yes. And um, which episodes have you listened to? Um, I have been listening to episodes about augmented reality, virtual reality and makerspace. That makerspace... Uh, show was very impactful for me because I saw that it was so practical. There were so many things that you were talking about and then the you guys were uh, showing how you can make a makerspace in your classroom so easily. And Yeah, the, the, the first guest, uh, Kate, especially, was yes. so inspiring, I thought. Yes, because she made it sound like it was so easy. Yeah. And it was. <laughs> uh, Two days after I heard, listened to the podcast, I decided to create my own makerspace in my classroom and I used centers, rotations, and I had ki some kids work in Legos. They made their own creations and another group worked with green screen and there was another work, group that worked with uh, circuits and kids were fascinated because it's very different from the usual routine that we have in the classroom. So tell me a little bit about your school and your particular role and you know what you teach and what the school's like as well so we can get a picture of, of where you are. Okay, I work in North Carolina in a school called E. Miller Elementary. Our school is a global school and we bring a lot of international teachers, including myself. And the idea with this school is that we are able to show the students the world yeah. through the visions of international teachers. But there are also regular, regular uh, teachers. Um, I teach fourth grade, elementary, teach all the subjects, science, social studies, math, <laughs> reading, spelling, and that's what I do. And so what was the outcome of the makerspace? The first intention was just tinkering, just trying new ideas. Yeah. But I saw potential in this and I tried it again and I tried it again several times and every time I tried it, it became so much easier, so more natural for the kids to be exposed to activities that are far from the routine of the classroom, okay? And I have set myself goals and I want to combine different technologies. For example, I want to combine Legos with the green screen and I want to combine it with stop motion. So the idea is that kids create their own Lego movies. Okay. Then they animate the backgrounds and at the same time they make the they, they create animations with stop moving technology 
And I think that this is something that has so much potential because it's something that kids can apply in their life right away. And you were here, are you, you here with colleagues today? Yes, um, we are a group of teachers who participate in a contest. It's an educational contest organized by Participates. Oh, okay. Participates is an agency that is in charge of promoting global education and bringing international teachers. Yeah. And in this contest, we had to create an innovation for something related to global education, how we can promote a global education in every classroom. So in my proposal, I use again green screen technology, and there is an app called Do Inc. Yeah. And my, it's very user friendly, my kids use this app, and they did research about a European country, and they presented this in this country, and after this they animated the backgrounds. Um, and so what was the research about? And um, they had to find different points of comparison between American culture and the culture in Europe. Okay. So kids were able to become more aware about the different aspects of everyday life, uh, how the, the, the food that people eat in Europe. And it was an amazing project because at the end the kids... Uh, uh, saw themselves present they, their final product was presented and we put every, all this, the pictures in a bulletin board and the kids use an app that I heard in your program as well called Arasma okay. and they uh, they use augmented reality so when anybody in the, in the school came to see the bulletin board they would be able to see that picture come into life with their presentations it was very, very powerful for the students to see that. And so, I'm guessing, so you entered the award and then you were a winner of the award. And yes. And so that means that you've been sponsored to come down yes. and visit this event? I was, I was sponsored to come here and I was allowed to not go to work for four days. <laughs> uh, just for the listeners, there's a big smile on your face right now. <laughs> That's quite funny. So what, what are you excited about? You know, who are you excited about meeting with and about watching? And First, I was excited about meeting you. Oh, that was <laughs> yes. so cool. The, the timing was funny, yes. wasn't it? It was amazing. and I love how you can connect so easily with people and <laughs> you are able to bring from them the meat of what they do and the, the responses from them about makerspace, about augmented reality and virtual reality was so rich that it's very easy for a teacher to apply it in real life. Well, that's very kind. It's so cool to meet uh, listeners from around the world in person and, you know, coming to South by Southwest is so far away and you end up meeting people and, oh, I listen to you. And, <laughs> yeah, it's a funny, funny feeling, but it's wonderful to connect with people all over the world through it. Um, I guess it's a bit like blogging mm -hmm. and people experience something similar through that as well. Yes. So. Yes. Um, um, okay, so you mentioned a couple of the apps that you've been enjoying using. Are there any particular other resources or people or Twitter chats, other things that you get a lot from in terms of your practice as a teacher as well? Yes. Uh, I, I'm trying a lot of augmented reality apps. Um, one of them is a Quiver. It's a coloring page that can turn, be turned into life. Uh, What's that called? Quiver. Quiver, okay. So you've got Curoscope on there as well. Yeah. These yes. guys based in Brighton, yeah. I think. Which one? Curoscope, this virtual tea. Oh, yes, yeah. virtual tea, and it's an app that you use, a, you wear a t shirt. Yeah. Based on that t shirt, you scan it, and then you can see people's organs yes, in real yeah. life. It's so awesome for the kids. So Ed's been on the podcast as well on one of the previous No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and other apps. A word brush. Okay, what's word brush? Bra word brush, you are able to create uh, signs, or you can create any writes, and the writing turns into a 3D image. Oh. So you, with your students, let's say that you are doing a math class, you can do a scavenging hunt. You can put different problems around the school, and the kids go with their iPads or their devices, and they found it 
in 3D is, so it's is amazing. It's like orienteering and then you get to the point and then you do your mass equation rather than just... Yes. Yeah. Kids are able to move and they are able to do so many things. That's very cool. And that one's word brush. Yes. So is that an augmented reality app as well? Yes. And then also Zookasam. In Zookasam you're able to bring animals or dinosaurs to life and this is also very interesting and I'm very excited about meeting the creator of Brain Pop. They're going to be here and <laughs> my kids love their videos and it's another app that I love to use in my classroom. And how do you generally go about finding these apps? Is it through word of mouth or other educators or research? Or? Um, usually I find credible YouTubers that are devoted to learn and talk about uh, apps and or other bloggers and yeah. they talk about these these apps and they list them so I look for them and the next time I try them you try them yes. and, then, and then you kind of decide okay am I going to keep that yes. or ditch it and, I, and most of them um, I try to do it regularly so that kids are able to master something yeah, the, yeah. the idea is to have mastery but but there are some apps that uh, that I feel that are, do not apply to my content so I just ditch them but yeah it's interesting and um, and how about you how did you get into teaching how long have you been teaching for and all of that all um, of that good stuff <laughs> okay I come from Colombia yeah and in Colombia is one of my favorite cyclists comes uh, Quintana oh yes yeah. Nairo Quintana yes yeah. we admire him so I've much I've seen him in, in real life in France going up the mountain what? <laughs> and there's always loads of like Colombians running up the hill waving their flags it's brilliant I love oh it. yes he yeah. we are so proud and they of travel him. all the way just to go and see him it's amazing yeah. yes people go and travel just to yeah. go on and be able to observe him we have yeah. very and he's he's quite small but he's yes. so fast he, and he's he awesome. he's he has made a huge success in uh, as a cyclist yeah yeah he's good i reckon he'll win it one year <sighs> yes and he i think he's gonna do very good this year yeah <laughs> I'm doing a cycling challenge uh, oh, okay. at the end of May, and I'm cycling 720 kilometers from the Atlantic through the uh -huh. Pyrenees to um, the Mediterranean. Oh, wow. So it's lots of the okay. Tour de France climbs. Yes. So if anyone wants to sponsor me, all the details are in the show notes. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, Quintana is very cool. Uh -huh. Good cyclist. And he's a very humble person. He is comes he really? from very uh, a poor family and... But you listen to him speaking Spanish, and he's like an everyday citizen. Is yeah. we feel very proud of him. Yeah, that's very yes. cool. <laughs> so sorry, I interrupted. I got yeah, it's okay. To <laughs> um, so you're from Colombia. Yes. Yeah. And um, I started to learn English uh, in college. Yeah. And one of my teachers inspired me to become a teacher. And why was that? Uh, and the way he taught the, the lessons made us realize that as teachers we're able to touch so many lives yeah so teaching is not only a job and how do you keep energized because it is an extremely draining job as mm -hmm. well so you have to put so much into it so how, you know how do you keep going and how do you i think that the key is for you to be an innovator mm -hmm. because when you are trying new ideas your days are not the same. How do you find the time? Because I hear that, you know, there's the long days. And I think it's a matter of efficiency. Okay. And so, well, sometimes my wife might say that I work too much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do, but it's... I, I find the time to nourish my passion. I feel passionate about using technology in my classroom. And when you love something... Uh, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on it. And how did you get into using tech? Did you think, you know, was this always a passion of yours or did you just sort of come by it? Well, I come from uh, Universidad de la Sabana. This is, a, I did a master's degree in integration of virtual learning environments oh, with education. And in that master's degree, they show us the potential of technology they show us that you can have you can as a teacher ask a question and then two or three students answer but with technology 
you can have the whole classroom respond to that answer. So you're able to get your kids more engaged and kids are able to create products that are applied to real life. If they wanted to be once animators, they can do that. If they wanted to learn coding, they, they can use technology. And th I think that those are careers that are going to be useful for them when they graduate from high school or from college. Very interesting. Do you use Twitter and... Oh, other? yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, sometimes the, a lot of the things that you share. Okay, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you link, for example, Lego Education, and they have lesson plans. They have activities and a lot of ideas. And people who follow you usually share a lot of apps, ideas, and I think that that's what helps me yeah, uh, to yeah. find the, the content of things that I want to apply. I suppose in the UK there's a struggle for teachers to navigate what works. Uh -huh. It's never that simple what works, but is it something similar in the US or is it down to just trial and error? And um, I think that it comes from having a an administrator mm -hmm. in your school that supports you. Okay. Um, yeah. My current principal, he loves to see us try new ideas. We receive technology badges so every time we try a new app, yeah. we earn a badge. Okay. So we are constantly motivated to try a new idea. Sometimes we fail, but at the same time we learn. And is your school a state school or is it a private school? It's a, pl it's a public school. Yeah, yes, so it's public funded. And, and do you feel like there's enough funding to try all these things? Because sometimes we hear that, mm -hmm. you know, people would like to try stuff, but budget is an issue and that kind of thing. Uh, I think that the things that we have are sometimes sufficient, but I think that the funding should be should increase. Um, I think that the funding for for public education should be higher. In that way, teacher teachers are able to come to events like this. Uh, kids are able to access more technology in the classroom. And I believe that more funded should go towards education. I heard today that Betsy DeVos is going to give a surprise visit to the conference on Tuesday. Oh, okay. So, you know, if you had a message, what would it be? I would say that a public education is essential, that teachers and students are the future of our country. So if we want our country to make progress, we need to f focus our attention and our resources towards schools. I'll, I'll pass it on. <laughs> well, it was wonderful to meet you yeah. and thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. this week's episode if you enjoy the edtech podcast please consider taking a look at our patron site and signing up for just one dollar a month i hope that you get more value than that from each listen and if enough of you do it it will be a wonderful thing if that's not your cup of tea but you love giving reviews feel free to post a review on itunes or spotify or share the podcast with an edtech or edu friend that's all for now we will be back soon with more from South by Southwest EDU and around the world. Bye-bye.